Hi everybody, back again with yet another catch-up video of figures that I've had in my collection for a little while. Uh, this time we're going to look at Superman from Batman vs Superman. bit different from the original release. There are some changes and I'll go over those when we uh, get to that part of the video. But this figure doesn't come with a lot of accessories. This is the Sideshow exclusive version as well, and I'll show you why it's a Sideshow exclusive version. Um, if you're a big Hot Toys fan, you'd already know what it is. But first thing he comes with um, is you've got the customary spare wrist pegs. He's got eight interchangeable hands. He's got the two fisted hands that you can see on the figure already. He has two of these open palmed hands, sort of relaxed open palmed hands. These would be ideal for museum poses, really. So he has a left and a right of those. Come on camera, get in focus. He has two of the classic superhero aggressive open palmed hands. These are ideal for quite dramatic sort of um, stances that you'd put him in. What I like about Hot Toys as well with the hands, they don't just mould the hand and paint it, they give you shading on the hands. Um, it's a bit difficult to pick out on this camera because it's uh, the light is quite bright but it's got shading on the knuckles going down towards the fingertips as well. Um, the veins pop out a little bit more and also you get nice little shading in the palm of the hand you can just about pick it out there so it's not all one colour a lot of companies do just paint their hands all one colour but this just gives it that bit more of a quality to the figure and the final set of hands that he's got these are used for flight poses it's just the normal sort of straight straight out hands you can see a bit of the shading a little bit better there on, on that hand. So yeah, he's got left and right of those. And you've just seen it in the picture here. This is the exclusive item. It's kryptonite. Um, it's a light up feature. So you just put the batteries in the bottom here. A bit difficult to see. Flip the switch. And there you have it. It is quite bright uh, say so it's a bit difficult to pick out on the camera um, but in the dark it, it is it does look quite impressive when you've got him in the detail if you switch all the lights off and just switch this on it does light up quite nicely and the other thing that he has is the new style base this is the flight pose base with the uh, bendable pole at the back and the waist grabber and the unique thing about these stands is you have this bit you can either have it down or up and if you notice if I pull it down um, it's got the yellow and orange sort of painting in there just to make it pop out a bit more a bit more dynamic so that's quite nice they've done that it's got the usual nameplate on it so that's it for accessories. That's all he comes with. He doesn't come with anything else. Um, I would like to have seen uh, an extra head sculpt. Um, a lot of people complained about this head sculpt. i got no problems with it, really. I prefer this head sculpt to the original one. Uh, the hair is different. Obviously, the expression is different. And uh, the face seems to be a lot more rounder, more muscular sort of looking face than the original release it's an ideal sort of expression for um, the standard museum poses and maybe some of the flight poses but it would have been nice if they gave him a face with a bit more expression on it but what I think they've gone for here is because he spends a bit of time in the movie sort of quite angry and he's got that sort of angry sort of look on his face not the full anger look but you can actually see it in there 
I'll zoom in a bit. I know the camera's a bit bright, so the colour's a lot paler than what it actually is. It's a lot darker than this. But you definitely can see Henry Cavill in there. A lot of people have been saying, I can't really see it. But once you get this figure in hand, this is what all us collectors say, they are totally different from what you see on film. But it's a really nice head sculpt. I'm really pleased with it. Um, the hair, as I say, is a bit different from the original. Maybe from that angle, it doesn't quite look like Henry Cavill. But I think with this figure, obviously you're going to see it via virtually sort of head-on like that. Or just slightly off to one side. But that is definitely him. On to the suits. Just zoom back out again. It's the same material as, or very similar material as what you've got on the Man of Steel figure. Obviously the colours are a little bit darker. Um, it's got slight differences in the blue piping that goes round the Randy's side there, down his leg and round his arms. The body underneath is different as well. Um, it's a slightly smaller body, or shorter anyway. The original release was figure, if you stand them side by side, he's quite a bit taller than this one. Um, but this one is a lot more shorter and a lot bulkier. Um, they've definitely added a little bit more muscle tone to the body that's underneath. Um, you can see that through the actual clothing. It's a lot more ripped and especially more noticeable on the legs. The legs are quite a bit larger um, in muscle mass than what you got on the original. But then in this film, he did bulk up a lot more. Um, so Hot Toys have been true to their sort of normal standards and tried to give you as near a movie accurate figure as they can you're never going to get a figure 100% movie accurate I'm not too bothered about accuracy really as long as the figure looks good in your display who cares there are a lot of people out there that per, uh, that want perfection but I'm sorry guys you're never going to get that um, another difference on the suit is the S symbol um, if I remember rightly, on the original one, it was just more like actually part of the suit, sort of painted on. Um, but this one is actually a bit of plastic that they've placed on the suit. I'm going to try and get it to an angle so you can see. But you can see it does protrude off of the suit. You've got the 3D effect of the S. So that is a big difference. And it's nicely done. While I've zoomed in, give you a closer look of the suit. And you can see the large legs there. Um, articulation wise, it's pretty good. Um, it's not so much in the arms. They do come out a bit. You'll see that. I'll do a couple of little poses later on. Um, but as I say with all in all my videos, with these sort of figures, with these sort of um, rubbery type suits, do not keep them posed in bent positions or too extreme for too long because the suit will either tear over time or it will become loose and it just won't look good on the figure. You'll lose the fit. Um, so I will pose this in a museum pose in my detoff. But I'm just doing it like this so you can have a look. The cape um, doesn't come with any wires in it. It's just a free-flowing cape. Um, I would like to have seen maybe some sort of option where you could pull this cape out, a bit like the Batman cape, and place a separate cape in with wires in. So if you wanted him in a flight pose, you could maybe have the um, cape out like that. Or if you've got it from the front, maybe sort of flicking out to one side. Um, that would have been ideal. I suppose if you've got him in a detolf with a little bit of blue tack or double-sided sticky tape you can stick it on the back of the glass and have it like that um, but yeah uh, that's basically all I can say about the clothing uh, the boots are slightly different as well from the original Man of Steel so as you can see I've just got him in a normal pose flight pose 
pretty sort of relaxed. So I'll put a pause in here and when we come back, um, we'll have him in a different sort of flight pose. Okay, here I've got him, quite a simple sort of pose. He's just sort of starting to turn. I've bent the stand round a little bit. And as you can see with the cape, it just sort of falls down. Um, not very natural for how it would be if he was banking. It probably would be sort of up there like that. Which is where the wired cape would come in handy. I'm sure Tony May or somebody like that will make one. But where I've got the arms now, that is about as wide as you can pull them out really. Um, not very easy to sort of put some really dynamic poses on this figure um, because the suit does restrict it. I'm sure the body underneath is really good for articulation but the suits and that just really do kill articulation on these sort of figures. Again I've got his leg bent, I've not changed it from the previous pose. All I've done is just pulled his arms out, turned his head up so he's looking in the direction that he's going to be going. Um, I've taken this pose from uh, the Clipper Kings video that he'd done so a um, little bit of copyright there clipper sorry obviously his pose is a bit better than mine well a hell of a lot better than mine because he's brilliant at posing his figures so check out his video for some good poses on this figure um, I'll put another pause in here and I'll try and have him with the put some different hands on him in another type of flight pose so bear with me okay nothing spectacular um, just got him normal shooting away I'd love to have pulled the arms forward so they were facing forward but you cannot do that with this suit um, so I've just swept them back bend the stand round turn the the clip the um, c-ring clip round to on his stomach and I'll just put him with the normal flight hands there the head will not move up any higher than what it is, so you can't have it fully up. Um, so if you want it sort of looking up a little bit more, you'll have to bend the pole a little bit more in that direction. Again, this would have been ideal pose for the um, wired cape. Very top heavy though if you have it like this. I'm sure nobody will pose him like this. Yeah, just another very simple sort of flight pose. Uh, I'll put another pause in here now and I'll have him in a different pose again. Here we have him in the typical Superman museum pose. Looking up to the heavens. I've just put the relaxed hands on him. Probably I will show him with the fisted hands, but I just wanted to show you the relaxed hands on the figure. One thing I have noticed while taking the hands off, the actual wrist pegs are a lighter colour than the hands. So when you're doing it, you'll want to try and pull these sleeves down as much as you can to hide the um, wrist pegs and the um, wrist itself because it does look slightly off. It's got quite a nice sort of um, bit of articulation on the ankle where they bend up and down so you can get his feet quite flat with this. Yes I know my poses are crap that's why I don't do poses on my videos. So I'll just put him in one more pose and then we'll finish off this video. Okay, I've just got him kneeling down now. Um, another problem I've found is, you, again, with posability, you cannot move his legs too much because of this suit does restrict it quite a bit. Another thing I've noticed, um, when you have him in the museum pose, um, the arms, when they're straight down, do not come up close to his body. Um, I believe there is a mod you can do, I'm not sure if there's a bodysuit under here, I can't feel a bodysuit, it just feels like solid um, normal um, framework under there. But there must be some sort of mod, maybe someone will come up with it where you can actually pull the arms in a bit nearer to the body. The um, Captain America suffered with this sort of problem. 
does have ab crunch. I'll just pull it down a bit. You can see there. So it does come down quite a bit. So you have got that option and it goes back quite a lot as well. And obviously when you pull it back, it stretches the suit and it shows the, the muscle tone underneath the body a lot more as well. Again, his head will not go any further than that. And if you bring it down, it comes down fairly far, but not enough, really. Um, this one doesn't have, I don't believe it has the um, protection under the chin there to prevent the um, paint from rubbing either. So yeah, as far as articulation wise goes, it's not the best, um, but then you're not going to get that with this type of suit. So I'll just put a pause in here and put him in his final pose that I'm going to put him in the detail with and we'll finish up this video. Okay, so there you go. Um, as you can see, with the arms, they do stick out quite a bit from the side of his body. That's, they will not go any closer than that. And I did have to smooth out the suit after having him in that last pose. This did come up quite a bit and caused quite a few wrinkles so I had to smooth that out a little bit um, I believe you can take the boots off but I'm not going to do that so yeah there's Superman from Batman vs Superman um, I haven't ordered the Batman from that film um, I just didn't really like the look of him that much I'd, I'd rather have the um, Dark Knight version of Batman to go with him they complement each other really well. So yeah, that's uh, my next video done. Uh, next up could be my um, movie promo Scarlet Witch from the Age of Ultron. So that would be the next one to come up. Plus um, a customised head that I've put on the original Scarlet Witch, the very first one that was uh, released. So I'll probably show that in the next video as well. So until then, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the very next video. Take care.